We shall fight capitalism with all our might. From altar boy to commander of a guerrilla army. Martin Tembisile Hani was born on the 28th of June 1942 in what was then the trans sky. He dreamed of becoming a priest. Instead, he joined the ANC in 1957 and later the SA Communist Party. But it was as a member of the ANC's armed wing, Umkonto Wesizwe, that Chris Hani earned his stripes. Excellent military man, a soldier of soldiers. MK veteran Tula Bopela fought alongside Hani in 1967 in what was then Rhodesia. When the battle starts, Ukri stands up and is fully visible to the enemy. So when we said to him, why don't you take cover? Who tell you now, how am I going to command you if I can see the enemy? He received military training in the Soviet Union and Germany, and much of Hani's life was spent in exile in countries such as Tanzania, Zambia, Mozambique, and Lesotho. He was the most loving person I had ever met. He married Dimpo Kamane in Lusaka in 1974, and they had three daughters. At dinner, he would be asking the girls one by one, how was your day? What happened? Did you have a test? How did you do? So it would be, you know, going from this one to that one. Of course, not being his daughter, I would be the last one to be asked. In 1969, Hani proved he wasn't afraid to speak out against injustice and corruption. He and a group of MK soldiers were censured by the ANC after they wrote a damning memorandum accusing their leaders of living comfortably in exile, their children enrolled in posh universities, their foot soldiers at the front line all but forgotten. That's one thing he hated, corruption. And in the letter that he wrote to the leadership, he was hitting very hard on corruption. Chris Hani would have reined in and uh, stamped his foot when he saw that uh, people were now involved in self-aggrandizement schemes. Anti-apartheid activist Nick Borain was involved in arranging some of the initial meetings between the ANC and the apartheid defense force. He describes Hani as a charming soldier with a love of classical literature. I remember one particular night where he had a hand on the two particular guys, hand on each shoulder. His head was back and he was talking about, Chris Hani's head was back, and he was talking about the future that we were going to have together. And I must tell you, those guys, both of them, in fact, many in the audience, they were in love with I think you How shall we convince people about you? For Tokyo Sekhwale, a former member of Umkonto Wesizwe, Hani's strength as a leader came to the fore when the ANC suspended the armed struggle in 1990. The mission, you know, was given by the leadership to the one who was our leader in war uh, to go and tell the various structures and people that it's time to engage in peace. And more often than not, the question of where Hani would be today had he not been assassinated elicits one answer. He had all the characteristics for being a future president. This was going to be a leader. Possibilities dashed on that fateful autumn morning in 1993. Tulasizwa Semelane, Johannesburg.